So he said, I'm going to cut off your ugly head. That's the truth. And he says, and when I put you on the ground, I'm coming after your sword. That technology has been in the hands of the enemy too long. Note, David did not possess the technologically advanced weapons like those of the giants. So what do you do when you don't have the technology of the enemy? You use what you have. You don't say, well, it's impossible. David said, you've heard the old saying. They're saying, look how big he is. He's so big. How could I ever kill him? David goes, he's so big. How could I miss I mean, look at the big ugly sucker. I can't miss anything that big. Apparently the guy, he's covered in armor from head to foot. It's a one in a million shot, they're saying. But David says, I've got a God who can guide this rock. And he slings that stone and it goes the one place on the whole entire body of the giant, kerklunk. Timber! And David runs up. Previously, he hasn't had. Saul and Jonathan are the only ones with a sword in the entire army. But David says, uh, now I've got a sword. And he pulls out the technologically advanced weapon of the giant and cuts his head off with his own sword. I think it's time that we use... What God is making available to us to cut off the head of the giant. I believe that God is empowering this generation so that we can reach the nations. We can reach it. We can beam these services all over the world and the countries that are closed otherwise that they can get the truth of the living God. I say it's time to take the technology out of the enemy's hands and put it in the hands of a David, a man that knows what to do with the sword, a man that says, I'm going to cut off your ugly head I'm going to make you pay for your words, boy. He says, and then, I'd never seen this in the scripture before. He says, and then when I'm finished with you, I'm starting on the rest of that scumbag army of yours. I'm not going to stop killing until the buzzards and the beast have feasted on your comrades' carcasses. I never know that. I thought all the time it was. But somewhere in the process of David making a decision to fight this giant, he realized this is bigger than just a personal battle between he, me and him. We have an opportunity for domination. We have an opportunity to win the victory. Not Why did David want to cut his head off? Because he didn't want to look over his shoulder and say, is he getting up? Is he coming to? Well, you can just solve that problem. Whack his head off. He's not going to get up if his head's cut off. You need to stay in the battle all year long. You've got the giant down on his back. And you have an opportunity this year that you have may have not had exactly the way it is. You cut that sucker's ugly head off. And then when you get that done, then you turn to the rest of the Philistines. And you say, as soon as I take care of him, I'm coming after you, devil. We're not letting up. We're not letting down. This is a year of war. Would you stand to your feet? This is a year of war. This is a year of battle. This is a year that we take. We advance the kingdom of God. Because this is the truth, Goliath. The battle is not yours. The battle is not mine you're not fighting me goliath you're fighting him come on church if god be for us who can be against us if god be for us musicians could you come and get ready in a moment mm. 
Mm. I, I, my preference is to sing something that I, I don't want to sing a sad song. I want to sing a glad song. My heart goes out to you. If you have had to hear a negative report recently. If you were hoping good things for your children. But they're wayward and they're not listening. And you hear the facts of their involvement in the world. And someone tells you, I've seen your kids such and such place. I'm sorry you had to hear those facts. It does change you when you hear these doctors say the things that they say. And we go to them, we pay them to tell us this stuff. And they say the facts, Mr. and Mrs. Willoughby, is Barbara, you're in stage four metastasized cancer. We can't cure you. We'll try to make you as comfortable as we can for as long as we can. But you can't expect to live a full life expectancy. <laughs> and so you go home and you act brave. But then you wake up in the night because the bed is shaking because, because the facts are overwhelming. And you've got a 12-year-old. It's bad enough that you might not see your teenagers married, but the 12-year-old's still in homeschooling. And the facts are so, so, we, we live in this realm where facts are everything to us. But somewhere in that, I told you that somebody wrote to me, Brother Tenney wrote to me and he said, Steve, he said, the battle is not for a miracle. The battle is for you to deepen your relationship with Jesus. If you touch Jesus, you'll most definitely get a miracle. Because you can't have Jesus and not have a miracle. There's no place in the scripture. There's not one instance in, even in Nazareth, where they rejected him. It still says that he healed some folks. Said he couldn't do any great works. But even there, he healed some folks. Just not as many as he wanted to. But any time you had Jesus, you had the miraculous. That's the truth. So what you need is you need Jesus. And he said, another friend, Tony Bailey, I called him because I never had so much trouble having faith before. But then I'd never had those kind of preponderance of facts. And so I called Tony and he wasn't at home. But the next day, he called me back and he said, Steve, he said, how are you doing? I said, I'm not doing good. That may be the first, that may be the first way that you get help is by being honest. We're so afraid. I'm supposed to be a man of God. I'm supposed to be a man of, of great faith. I, I go all these places and preach these crusades and hundreds of people receive the Holy Ghost. And then I, and, and then I should say that? Well, if it's the truth. You should say it. I didn't want to say it, but I said, I'm not doing good. And so he started talking to me. He said, uh, he listened, and then he spoke very softly. He said, Steve, what did Jesus say to you last? I said, well, eight years ago, the second time that Barbara had cancer,